And so a great example would be our uh, ban against same-sex marriage. Um, that was a ban that was approved by the majority of the voters um, in terms of the amendment to our state constitution. Mm -hmm. But we still have to comply with the United States Constitution. Now, the Equal Protection Clause says that we don't treat people differently based on their sex, age, race, or creed, and we also don't treat them differently based on sexual orientation. And so the judge in that case noted that there is a fundamental liberty interest in being, to, being able to marry who you love and that the Equal Protection Clause uh, was violated. And so to the extent uh, as Attorney General that I I can talk to legislators about uh, proposals or could talk to the governor or could talk to other people um, who have input on an issue like that and perhaps uh, nip it in the bud at the front. Uh, I think that's really important and I, and I think you know I've done it as district attorney, I've done it when I was in private practice. When I see that there is a flaw in the system or I see that there's a gap in a law or that it's having unintended consequences, I'm always going to reach out uh, to a legislator or to people who can actually uh, influence the outcome of, of those types of issues because I think it makes good sense. Because we are the only state that now creates this additional element of a governmental issued ID. And our state constitution is very clear about the requirements that our voters need to have in order to be to be able to exercise that constitutional right to vote. And there are three. A governmental issued ID is not among those three. And so to the extent that we're creating an additional requirement to exercise that very important constitutional right, I think we've got a problem.